Blog Talk Radio. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Hi, this is Nathalie Jean. This is Natalie Jean. Yes, this is Chatting with Nat. And today we have the honor of having Latin pop artist Reina Mar. Reina Mar is a Latin pop artist from New Jersey with over seven years of experience in the entertainment industry. The Cuban-American Jersey native has been seen performing around New Jersey and New York in places like the Stone Pony. MetLife Stadium for La Mega and El Amor at the 116th Festival in Harlem, the Puerto Rican Day Parade, NJ Pack, and more. One of Reina's greatest accomplishments, including composing, writing, and performing her own musical TED Talk for Bergen stages called To Breathe the Air of Freedom. Along with performing across the tri-state, she's, she has accomplished notable work as a songwriter and recording artist. She has worked on licensed TV and film projects alongside writers and producers, including one of Alicia Keys' producers, Ron Haney, and, and Andreas Sahar from Totally Square Records. Reina has gone along to... Reina has gone along to release her very own self-titled EP, Reina Mar. The EP, back in the October of 2020. Reina Mar's new EP captivates listeners with upbeat songs with English, Spanish lyrics, creating her own sound with its mixture of pop, Latin pop, dance, and rap. The EP has multiple hit singles ready to make an impact with not just the Latin pop market, but with mainstream pop as well. Reina states that the whole EP is a way to take listeners on a journey through her life, her audience. Her audience is getting familiar with her ups and downs, including love, heartbreak, and finding oneself. All right. Uh, since I've just finished reading uh, Arena's um, bio, we can now let her in because she's now here. So let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Arena, how are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just got out of a, a rehearsal now. <laughs> just got yeah. home. I, I get. I get the whole uh, multitasking thing. Um, so oh how- yeah. How have you been um, during this pandemic thing that's been going on? Oh, well, I mean, definitely a lot better now. Uh, You know, at at first it was a little rough. Uh, You know, we all kind of were adjusting to the change. Um, But uh, but definitely I've gotten a lot of, you know, positive things that have come out of the pandemic, you know, just focusing on my music, releasing an album and, you know, now releasing uh, more music and being a part of projects now that everything's opening back up. Um, so uh, I guess uh, something that was bad in the beginning kind of turned into something good. You know, I think with that we can all see the good in this pandemic. <laughs> right. Um, and one of the questions that I like to ask people is that, so obviously, like you said, the pandemic has been awful. Um, people have died, people have lost limbs, people are still in the hospital, people are still coughing, people have had brain fog, um, they've had lingering effects, it's just been an awful thing. But on the flip side, there have been positives uh, that have come out of this situation in the sense that, you know, people have really thought about their lives. They've, they've had the time to self-reflect. There are many articles about, you know, people leaving their jobs because they want to be more fulfilled. It's not just about money. Um, I've seen more family members walking together in the street than I've ever seen before. I was just shocked to see, oh, there's people, oh, they have families in this neighborhood because it was just, um, it was, it was crazy. It's crazy. I don't know where these people came from, but they were hiding in the house. Um, Some people decided (laughs) to basically, you know, push back on work hours. Because one of the things they realized is that they were working too many hours. They were missing out time on family time. 
you know, um, climate change, my God, we were not in the streets and the pollution level went so down. The animals were like, oh my gosh, we can party now. And mother nature was just like, I can breathe. Um, and so everybody else, you know, like artists, uh, we, we took time to really think about who we are as artists, how we want to be seen. We became very introspective. A lot of us did, um, in any modality, anybody's life they became very introspective because what this thing did is really we knew life was short well this thing told us life is extremely short you better do what you need to do in this lifetime so during this time did you take the opportunity to self-reflect truly decide what you want to do how you want to be perceived as an artist Oh, yes, absolutely. And and I think that that was one of the amazing things that came out of the pandemic, again, something good coming out from something that you wouldn't think, you know, for, for something bad. Um, you know, I definitely got that time to self-reflect and just um, and just see, you know, where I guess find my sound and my image as an artist because I I'm very versatile. I, I come mm-hmm. from a musical theater background and 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 classical training, but I, you know, I love uh, pop music and I love my Latin culture, you know, since I'm Cuban. Um, So I really wanted to, you know, find myself in in my music in a way that I could uh, portray my culture and my musicality in my work. Um, So I, I, I think the pandemic definitely gave me a chance to, to do that. Uh, Also gave me a chance just to be thankful uh, in, in general for the things that we all had before the pandemic and then to have things stripped away and taken away, it kind of just put things into perspective. Like, wow, like we actually had it good. And uh, it just, it also just taught me to be more appreciative of what I have. Absolutely. Amen to that. I can agree with you. I mean, I appreciated a lot more things. I appreciated the fact that one of the things it did for me is, you know, you know, who's there and you know, who is it, you know, who's there for you, you know, who's not there for you. So I got rid of the negative and kept the positive in my life. So I'm truly thankful for that. Um, What was it about the music industry that made you say, whoa, you know, this is me. I have to be a part of this. This is a part of me. Was it something that you heard, you saw, you read, whatever? What was it that said, God, this music thing, I've just got to do it? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, just, like again, like going back to, you know, when I used to be in, into musical theater and I went to school for theater and acting and things like that. And being on stage for the very first time, um, I, I was in, I, you know, I used to do plays and things like that. And there was a, my first solo that I did was by Celine Dion, my heart will go on. And I remember just being so, so nervous. But once I got on the stage, I just felt like I was home. I felt like I've created my space and it was just this awesome adrenaline rush. And I just, felt like wow like this is where I belong this is my purpose this is what I have to pursue and I just remember feeling that you know and and at first I was kind of scared to take that leap and and want to pursue this professionally full-time um you know but uh but the more I performed and the more I, I I got that experience of being on stage and writing music and collaborating I was like this is my purpose in my life like I have to do this and I know it's really hard. There's a lot of obstacles in this industry. A lot of uh, of artists could agree on that. Uh, but I think that it's all worth it. And I feel that this is definitely my purpose uh, here on earth to, um, you know, uh, share my work and my music. And I feel that it, it does bring happiness to people and it makes people feel emotions and feel something. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um how important is it for you to be an authentic um, singer? How important is it for you to sing or speak your truth? Oh, it's super important. And I feel that, you know, there are some artists out there that kind of like pretend to be someone that they're not. Same thing with just like right. a person in general, you know. Um, so I've tried to be the, the most authentic that I could possibly be, you know, and it, and it's been hard for me because I'm just that type of person that I, especially in my personal life and things that are personal to me, I kind of want to keep to myself. And that's why I'm not the biggest fan of social media. I'm on there cause I'm an artist and I have, have to have a presence online, but um, you know, I, I know that it's super important to obviously expose yourself and, and be on social media. But, um, but yeah, I think that, 
you know, it, it has been hard for me to show people like, you know, these are my songs, this is my work. And that's why it took a long time for me to release music because they're just these real, true, authentic feelings that I feel, you know, these are things that I wrote. Right. Um, but then I kind of just got over that fear and I was like, you know, what What do I have to lose? You know, I, I love my work. I love doing what I do, you know, and I know that I, or I hope that there are people out there that resonate with it, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, as I've been learning a lot during this uh, pandemic and downtime, so to speak, one of the things that people are craving is authenticity, even with TikTok and you know, all these social media things, specifically TikTok. They said that the videos that there are the most powerful are the ones that people follow the most. Or people are videos that are with authenticity in it, people that are just being authentic, people that are just being themselves, because people crave, have been craving that for the past six years, we've had to deal with all this crap about fake news, people don't know what to trust, this, that, or the other, yeah. so they really want something that they can hold on to, that they can gravitate to, they can go to an artist and say, oh my gosh, this artist gets me, they feel like they could contact you and just you know, have a long conversation with you and just be like, oh my gosh, I got to go to an MR. I need to listen to her music because I just feel so empowered by everything that she does in this life. So yeah, people, um, they're craving that authentic life. Now, tell me more about um, the TEDx talk, TED talk that you did for Bergen Stages called To Breathe the Air of Freedom. Yes, yes, yes. I was a, a while back, but I'll, I'll never forget it. It was such an unforgettable experience. I'm super, super blessed that I got that opportunity to be a part of of, TED, of the Bergen Stages TED Talk. Um, mm. I, I, I actually was just speaking with a director because I studied acting there at that college. And I was just telling him about my family story. You know, I'm a, a first generation American, you know, I, um, uh, Cuban American. My family mm -hmm. came from Cuba. Uh, my parents were both born over there. My grandparents, uh, and they they fought a lot during the the revolution and the communism over there. What what was happening? And and even though I've never been to Cuba, you know, because my grandmother was always like, you know, don't go to Cuba. You're giving money to the communists. And so I never right. went. And there was always this like longing to go. But you know, my grandmother, you know, may she rest in peace was like, you know, I it would just be almost like a slap in the face to me if you went back because I mm. struggled so much to bring your generation here and she even fought in the army uh to mm. bring um so Del Castro into power and then he betrayed the you know the people and I can right. go on and on about it but <laughs> you know, so there was this whole thing and, and my, my director I was explaining this to him and he was like, You should just do, you should do a tech talk about this. You should write a script. You you should actually maybe even write a musical or a play about what your family went through. And at first, I that seemed like a very overwhelming idea to me. Uh, but he, you know, his his name is uh, is Tom O'Neill, and yeah. he really gave me the the inspiration and the motivation to to do this TED talk. And he's he he is still behind me saying you should do a play, you should write, you know, a whole musical or something because I, I I incorporated music into it. Um, but yeah, it, it was amazing. I I. That's definitely one of the highlights in my life. I absolutely loved being a part of that. What makes your music unique? So what makes my music unique? Um, I do feel that, um, you know, being a, a Latin pop artist, I've incorporated, you know, the the Latin vibes and the, and the Latin instrumentation in my music and just kind of creating that fresh new sound, which I think is very in right now. There's definitely, you know, like Kali Uchis, if I'm saying her name correctly, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's one, someone that has, has been doing that type of music where she's mixing um, Spanish and English lyrics and things like that. So I think that that is definitely something that's huge right now. And I've been wanting to, to do that, but I've always felt so scared because I, I haven't heard like music like that. That's like, like half Spanish and half English. And right. so, it's really, I think that that is definitely different in itself. And just, um, I feel that uh, my voice is, I, I guess, like different from other people. And this is what I've been told. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of uh, like auto tune type of pop singing out there. And I'm just very raw and real with my voice. I don't really like auto tune too much. Um, I kind of, you know, when I'm in the studio and I do a take, I want it to be, 
r- right on. I don't want it to be flat mm-hmm. or sharp. I don't want any tuning. You know, I just want it to be right on. Um, you know, so I think that there's some rawness and authenticity in 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 my voice and, and what I create as well. Now, Latin pop versus American pop, which one would you say is the easiest or are they both equally hard to break into? Hmm. Um, I think the Latin Latin market is a little bit easier to break into, I think, um, from what I've heard. I mean, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I think that it is a little bit easier um, when someone like has talent and it's like mm. really amazing in the Latin world. It's like, whoa, they have, t-, you know, and then I feel like in American pop, it's like everybody sounds the same. <laughs> and I feel like maybe it's like a little harder to, to break into, in my opinion. Where does the name Reina Mar come from? Reina Mar. So Reina means queen in Spanish yeah. and yeah. Mar means the sea in Spanish mm-hmm. and Mar my last name is actually Martinez Rosa Martinez mm-hmm. is my name it's going on there um but my grandmother actually used to call me mi reina like my queen mm-hmm. when I was a child okay and that really resonated with me and I also really love nature and the ocean and that's that's something that I'm I'm really connected to mm-hmm. so that's where the name comes from there's a lot of symbolism in it and it, it right. means so much to me Awesome. No, I think it's beautiful. Um, you, uh, in your bio, it says that you work on a licensed TV and film projects along with writers and producers, including one of Alicia Keys' producers. Um, what projects did you work on? Yeah, sure thing. So I actually write for Andre Sahar. Uh, he mm-hmm. has a, a label. I believe he's in, uh, Na- no, I'm sorry, New Orleans. Okay. And uh, called Full Squared Records, and he writes for publishing companies. So he writes for uh, TV shows, commercials, movies, and things like that. And uh, Ron Haney is the producer that is work that works with him. So I go to Long Branch and I record uh, songs that are are already written, and I do the vocal tracking for the songs mm-hmm. when uh, they're already produced. Um, so I I. I've done a few different songs and things like that that have landed like licensing deals. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where they're going. <laughs> I know that yeah. they've been signed on to like publishing companies. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that, that's been an amazing experience. I absolutely love working with Andres and Ron, uh, Ron Haney. He's one of the best producers. I think the best producer I've ever worked with. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun working on projects with them. Um, and what is your song uh, songwriting process like, and how do you deal with writer's block if you have it? Yeah, sure thing. So, um, so my process is, I mean, I kind of like like things come to me. Sometimes a melody comes to me, or the lyrics come to me. It's depending. Sometimes a, a like a beat or a song or instrumentation is presented to me, and then I write to it. Um, but recently, I've actually been just building songs from melodies that I come up with in my head, you know, I, or sometimes lyrics, for example, and what I do is I put these, I have like a file or, you know, on notes on my mm-hmm. phone, and anytime I think of something, well, like, wow, that that line is really cool, I'm going to write it down, you know, and then I'll go back to it, and then I'll create a song out of it, and that's actually what happened with Back to You, which is my upcoming single that's being released in two days on digital platforms, Um, you know, I was just in my car and a melody Mm -hmm. came to me. And I remember that I had, I wrote these lyrics down like years ago and I was like, this would go really great. And I finished writing the song, um, you know, in my car, (laughs) like hitting on my steering wheel for real, (laughs) Um, you know, so that's kind of been my process now. I mean, and when I get writer's block, which has happened to me so many times especially if I'm really stressed or there's a lot of things going on I kind of just try to break the pattern of what I'm doing so like sometimes I get caught and I'm like on autopilot and I'm just you know going to work going to sleep eating going to work going to sleep eating like I have this pattern and sometimes just breaking that pattern going on a walk you know Mm -hmm. um, exercising listening to to meditation music like breaking that pattern and doing something I don't usually do Gives right. me that spark of inspiration, so I think that that would help me with uh or has helped me with the writer's block. 
Yeah, you know, I just yell at the screen or the piece of paper because I'm still old school. I still write things. I just throw things on the board. Uh, I, I, I throw things on the screen or piece of paper. And I'm like, okay, put yourselves together. I like to work with the theme, but I usually start out with the chorus and work around it. Yeah. And that usually happens. But like I tell some people, the best place for me to ever write a song is in the shower. <laughs> I come oh, up with absolutely. the and then I forget them. I mean, I bring my phone. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Well, you know, I get it in the hour and try to repeat, repeat, repeat. But that just doesn't work if I'm trying to come up with a waterproof thing that you can put in the shower that you can't That's hear. That's what I was about to say. My boyfriend got me a shower pad. <laughs> and I was able, because I always, like, think of these really cool ideas in the shower. And he bought me, this is, like, when we first started dating, like, two years ago. He bought me a shower pad, and I you can attach it to the shower. There's a pencil right next to it, and you just write in the shower, and it's waterproof. And that's how I was able to get some of my ideas down, believe it or not. So, <laughs> yes, I think it's on Amazon. I'll ask him and send you the link. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm going to have to get one of those. Are you serious? Yeah, that's the awesome. on Amazon right now. I see it. Um, all righty. Well, <laughs> you learn something new. My God, I love that. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to play your song back to you. Tell us what that's about. So back to you. So that I think it's probably the most vulnerable song that I've written and and, and I'm now releasing. It's the first pop ballad that I'm releasing because I've been doing a lot of Latin pop, like upbeat type of music. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a very chill, dreamy, laid back of song. Um, The lyrics are are really deep. Um, And I feel like the, the song, I mean, everybody can interpret it differently, but the song isn't really about someone specific. It's really just like an emotion that I am familiar with that I've had of longing for someone that I used to be with that I used to have in my life you know and and that song for me even though a lot of people will interpret it as in like someone that I used to be with um you know that I broke up with or you know and that's what it's actually exemplified in the music video that's how it's um that's how it's portrayed I really think of it as like you know like my grandmother my grandfather they were such a huge part of my life and just me not having them in my life anymore and just missing them and longing just longing for that person my heart always goes back to them you know um so that's kind of what that song means to me it's it was really off of an emotion uh that I've felt in my life an emotion of loss and and you know wanting to go back to that special person and I feel that or I hope that people will resonate with it Mm. uh, because I know that we've had our fair share of, of loss and 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 experiencing that um, so yeah, I would say that that's what the song is about. Um, I'm super like nervous, but excited at the same time, because this is a different sound, um, that I'm, that I'm going for, because again, it's been all Latin pop music. So this is all English lyrics. It's a pop song. Um, so, but yeah, I, I am really excited for people to hear it and, and get people's thoughts on it. Yeah, well, let's do it then. <laughs> Don't mean to be a bother, but there are things that I just need to say. So if I'm being honest, days without. 
what he jumped That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm so, sorry. I mean, you, could, you could hear that in in a film, commercial, documentary. Um, you have a, definitely have a beautiful voice. Um, Thank you so no, much. I appreciate it. It's really good. Um, what is your favorite part? Is the, your favorite part working on the recording process or is it the end, the mix of everything and listening to everything that you've done? Um, I mean, I think like, I think we could all say like the what like mixing and putting everything together like that is the best part because you're like, oh my God, you're like watching it come together. Like you're, you're watching your creation come together. So I think that that would be my favorite part. Um, you know, and, and it's crazy because <laughs> I actually, this song was created in my home studio. My boyfriend and I have, you know, uh, uh, an apartment studio and we literally created this at home and he act- yeah. is actually the one that helped me. Pr- uh, he produced it, engineered it, um, and mixed it as well. And, uh, you know, he helped with the inst- instrumentation as well and, and helped me really bring this, you know, my vision to life for this song. And it's crazy because it wasn't in a, a crazy, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars studio. It, it was just the two of us here in our apartment <laughs> and wow. we created this, <laughs> yeah and one of our, our friends yeah those are the best songs I'm you know it's great to be in a great studio and all that stuff but sometimes things just happen in small studio small place with the not so expensive equipment and those are the best tracks because they're the most authentic you know what I mean you, you're basically using what you have and it just comes out fantastic because it's so, so raw um, I'm like yeah the songs that I love the most are the ones that are, you know, scaled back because you can really hear the sound of the artist's voice, um, the, the the emotions that the person is evoking and stuff like that. So, no, I say kudos to you for creating such um, a beautiful song. It's, it's amazing. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. What song of yours is your favorite and uh, is it your favorite to perform as well? Sure thing. So, um, I would say, I would say my favorite song to, I mean, I, I, I think back to you, honestly, I haven't performed it live yet. Okay. Uh, since it, you know, it's going to be released in, in two days. So I have, mm-hmm. I haven't performed it live yet, but just lyric wise and, and melody wise, I, I really love the song and I feel so strongly about it. I would mm. say the other song would probably be Novella, which is was my first uh, uh, debut single. It was also in, in my EP, uh, self-titled Raina Mar. And that is, you know, that is a Latin pop song. Um, mm. And I did a music video to it as well. So that was like a big music video that I did a few months back. Right. And that song is like my baby. So I treasure that song and I performed it live as well. And you know, people, I see people vibing with it and bopping to it, you know, so it makes me feel really good. Uh, so I really like that song as well. Awesome. Who are your musical inspirations and why? Or you can choose Ooh, three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> I have Who's a lot three? of, I grew up listening to so many different artists and different styles. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really resonate with Adele and okay. also her, her song, Easy On Me, her new song is absolutely phenomenal. And kind of going back to what you were talking about, authenticity, being right. authentic, her voice is authentic and it inspires me to be authentic. And it's crazy because she's done songs like Someone Like You or When We Were Young. Mm-hmm. It's crazy because I don't want to say her, her singing isn't perfect because it's literally perfect, but she doesn't auto tune her voice. Like, yeah, maybe there's tuning here and there, but like the emotion is just so strong that if it's auto tuned, I feel like it'll lose it. And right. there's certain, you know, things that are that are sharp or flat, but it's so beautiful and like again, so authentic. And that's how the voice is, you know. Before auto tune, that I feel like that's what kind of made the voice beautiful, just that authenticity of it. Um, you know, uh, so I really resonate a lot with Adele and she's really inspired me to pursue a music career. Um, I also really love, uh, Selena. 
Mm -hmm. She's a Mexican Tejano singer that passed away the year I was born in 95. Right. And uh, I also really resonate with her music as well. I used to jam out to her music with my cousin growing up uh, when we were kids. And again, you know, she did the whole like Spanish and English thing and she killed it both in both markets. And, uh, you know, I, even though I've never met her, I've never seen her live. Like her music is is just so alive to me. Um, And yeah, like I would say those two Adele, Selena, I love big singers like Whitney Houston, mm-hmm. Celine Dion, like anyone with a big voice. I really appreciate uh, uh, singers with, with an artist with depth and emotion yeah. and, and range in their voice. Absolutely. I have to agree with you with Adele. So I know the year when she beat Beyonce um, at the Grammys and people got upset about that. But what people don't seem to understand, and I'm not poo-pooing on Beyonce, but, okay, Beyonce is a great performer. You go see her, you're going to get a great show. But she doesn't well, She doesn't move me. Um, I think that with Beyonce, she sings at you and Adele sings mm-hmm. too. And I think people can relate to Adele more than they can relate to Beyonce because, you know, Beyonce's flashy. She's just in, And then Adele, she's down home. She's like a, the girl you can <laughs> You can call, you feel like you could DM her right now because you listen to her songs. You're like, oh my God, this woman just gets me. But when you look at Beyonce, for me, she, she's more ego driven. That's just yeah. massive on that situation. I 100% agree with you on that. Yeah, you, you said it perfectly. You feel like they're singing at you, you know? Right. Like there's no depth to what they're singing about, you know? The only time I heard depth really from Beyonce is when she did, I think it was Dream Girls. And she mm. did that song, Listen. Yeah. That's yes. one of the first times where I was like, wow, like that just hit me, you know, but every, all that other stuff, like Lemon, I mean, Lemonade was a really good album. I think that that was the, the one that was nominated that year that Adele won. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with you on that. The majority of her music is just, just kind of singing at you, but not really connecting yeah. like Adele right. does. Like, I feel like Adele hits Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now with Lena, you know, the one thing, when I think about Selena, I think about Jennifer Lopez all the time. And I always think that if Selena hadn't been murdered, Jennifer Lopez wouldn't be where she is today. Because it's the fact that uh, Jennifer Lopez played Selena that really started her career. Absolutely. Whenever I see Jennifer, I always think that. I'm like, if Selena had been, I think Selena would be in the place of where Jennifer Lopez is right now. And it's not to poo-poo on Jennifer Lopez because she's done, she's evolved. I never thought she was a great singer in the beginning with, but she's evolved in her singing. She's gotten a lot better. Yeah. Like, I respect her. Like, she's done a lot. Like, she's beautiful. She acts, she sings, she dances, you know. But, yeah, I could agree with you. Like, her voice isn't, like, the best thing in the world. But she, like, she holds it down, you know. Like, I have respect for her. (laughs) She can hold it down. I mean, when in the beginning when she first came out, um, it wasn't the greatest, but you can tell that she's harnessed her craft in every aspect. I mean, the last movie she did where she played that um, that stripper and stuff like that, I thought that she, I mean, I thought she did an amazing, amazing job. But like I said, yeah. every time I watch her, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Selena would have been right here. It's it's just weird <laughs> how things work. It's sad that Selena was killed by her manager, but it, it's just or her assistant. Um, it, that's just extremely tragic. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you on all levels with the people that you have chosen. Now, what is one thing that you learned about the music industry that you didn't know before you got into it? Um, what is one thing that I learned before I got into it? Um, well, one thing you can't do this alone. (laughs) It can't be a one man show. You have to surround yourself with people that have the same vision that you have that support you, Mm. you know, positive vibes, because there's a lot of darkness in this industry. Mm. And, um, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I, people always told me, Oh, you got to be careful in the industry. It's so cutthroat and people will backstab you and all but then when you actually experience it, which I have, you're mm-hmm. like, wow, oh, my God. Like, the people that I surround myself with, are it's so important. It's so detrimental yeah. to your career as an artist, you know. And, and it's taken a while for me to find 
that group of people and that team of people that I that I could collaborate with. Yeah. That that I vibe with, you know, just like your people, you know. Um, and I and I and I feel that I didn't know how important that was before I entered the industry, and then when I experienced obstacles and dealing with different personalities and people and 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 being burned a few times. I, I learned that, and that's why, you know, I feel that I, I don't know things as, like, a failure or, mm-hmm. oh, it didn't work out. Like, I don't get so caught up in it. Things happen for a reason. Like, you grow from it, you learn from it, and you move on, and you do better, you know? And that's what the industry has taught me. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, it's taught me a lot of those things, too. What are three useful resources that have helped you in the music business? Three useful resources. Um, so definitely, um, I would say, I guess, surrounding yourself with a, a good team of people. Yep. So uh, having a producer on board, uh, having, you know, a graphic designer, uh, mm. uh, you know, people, again, to also help you with your image as well. Yep. Um, social media is such a huge resource. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't a social media person at all until I started taking my career seriously into the next level. And I, I discovered that obviously, like, that's how you're going to reach people. That's how you're going to be successful. You have to have a presence on social media, online, yeah. on YouTube, Spotify, you know, getting those numbers up. So that's another, like, resource that I think that uh, artists can benefit from. Again, having a great team behind them as well, and just surrounding themselves by people that support them and love them and, and want the best for them, mm-hmm. I would say. That, that's true. What is one myth about the music industry you'd want to debunk? I'm sorry, oh, uh, one what? I couldn't hear that. One, what is one myth about the music industry you would want to debunk? One myth. Okay, so, oh, if you get signed by a record label, you're going to make it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a huge myth. That's big. That's a that's huge a myth, man, because, <laughs> yeah, that's I've that's had big. friends that have been signed, and, like, you know, it's crazy. And, like, getting, it, it's insane, because getting signed can actually ruin someone's career, yeah. and no one even knows that. People Isn't think, like, crazy? oh, you get signed, you automatically made it. No, like, some people get shelved. They'll yeah. get signed and then they can't even release their music. They get shelved and they're, that that's what happens. There's another thing that happens where, you know, the label just strips down your authenticity and creates yeah. something that you're not. Um, you know, and Gaga talks about that. Gaga, you know, opened up about that when she first, you know, with her experience uh, signing with uh, her first label. Um, so yeah, I think that that would be like, that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're a hundred percent right. It's like people are always, oh, I want to get signed to a label. I want to get signed to a label. But when you get signed to that label, it doesn't mean that just everything's just, oh, the money's just going to be rolling in. You're exactly right. There's some late, there's some artists that have been signed and then nothing happens with it. They just shelve it yeah. or the, the label tries to push them and nothing comes about it. And they're just like, okay, we're going to terminate this agreement. It it doesn't yep. mean that when you get signed anymore, because it it, it right. like you said you have to have even the label you have to have that team that's going to back you and push you and really bring about who you are as an artist and and yeah they can just they they can turn you into something that you're not which is so sad no I agree with you a hundred percent um what advice oh, would you yeah. give to yourself if you could what advice would I give to myself you said your younger self my younger self okay um my younger self don't be so hard on yourself and I feel like I would say that to myself now (laughs) I just feel that not not, don't be so hard on yourself and also don't give other people I guess the power Mm -hmm. to make you feel a a certain way I I, what I mean by that I guess I could word it better just like it, it shouldn't matter what other people think of you or what other people mm-hmm. say, because if you are going off of what somebody else is, somebody else says, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to do what you want to yeah. do. There's been so many people that have told me to do things a certain way that don't make me happy that I don't resonate with. So why am I going to sacrifice my happiness and, you know, my goals and my, 
you know, uh, goals and dreams in life for someone else's happiness or someone mm-hmm. else's opinion. And I learned, and, and that's what I was, cause when I was a kid, I, I, I used to take what people say. And sometimes I still do that. It's a b- old habit that I have that comes back sometimes. I, I get so invested in what other people think. And I don't, and I, I, I don't get the chance to ask myself, like, well, what makes you happy? Like, what, what is going to resonate with you? You know, so I would say that that's something that I would tell my younger self. I love that. I love that. I agree with you 100%. And lastly, what is a an affirmation or inspirational quote or message that you like to use to motivate yourself? To motivate yourself? Um, I would say things happen for a reason and trust it. Trust yep. the universe. Trust God. If you're not religious, trust the universe. Um, things are meant to happen the way that that they're meant to happen. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be really tough times in your life, but there's going to be growth and something good that comes out of it. And I think that that idea, that ideology has helped me uh, get through those tough times. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Rina Mar, <laughs> for being on, chatting with Nat. And thank you for the advice on the shower pad. I bought one while we were on the phone. Um, <laughs> that pad up there and start writing. I love it. Uh, you're inspirational. <laughs> you have an amazing voice. I can't wait to hear your upcoming projects and see your name in life. I think you are awesome and awe inspiring. So thank you so much for being on Chatting with Nat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you, you know, exposing artists and giving artists a platform to, you know, to showcase their work uh, and get to know us a little bit more. So I appreciate you having us on. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. And I hope you have a great week. Everyone, this was Chatting with Net with the amazing Latin pop artist, Rena Mar. She's amazing. You could just Google her. You can find her on Instagram, Rena Mar Music. Facebook fan page is Rena Mar Music. Just find her. You'll love her. Until next time on Chatting with Ned. Chatting with Ned is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Love your voice.